Today, I'm going to be talking about ergonomics, making things comfortable so you don't hurt all over. All right, so you've probably heard the word ergonomics. What does it literally mean? Ergonomics comes from the Greek ergon, meaning work, and English economics. So simply put, ergonomics is the economics of the way people work. It's how people interact with their surrounding environments. And there's many factors that go into ergonomics. There's people who do it for a living. Ergonomics aims to improve personal well-being and increase efficiency. You typically hear it paired with the phrase human factors. What I like about ergonomics is that not only does it improve the well-being of employees, but if done properly, it also saves money for the company and management. So I think it's one of those rare fields where you're actually really helping the people at a company while also making a profit from it. And sometimes that is difficult to do. So you have your inputs into the system and you have your inputs out to the system. But with every system and efficiency, you have loss. For ergonomics, that loss is usually characterized by pain and the financial costs of the healthcare associated with that pain. What kind of pain am I talking about here? Well, they're typically called repetitive strain injuries, but they're known by tons of different names. You may have heard cumulative trauma disorders, repetitive stress injuries, repetitive motion injuries, musculoskeletal disorders, or sports overuse syndrome. Those all mean very similar things. They're all types of repetitive strain injuries. They occur from performing a task in an improper position and or for too long. So even if you're doing something the proper way, you can just do too much of it. Or you might be doing it improperly and way too much of it. Some examples include carpal tunnel syndrome, tennis elbow, tendinitis, and trigger finger. Compared to a lot of my engineering videos, ergonomics is something you see in and outside of manufacturing. You see it in the service industry, you see it in sports, even in your day-to-day -day life at home, you could have ergonomic issues. So what do we do about it then? Nobody wants repetitive strain injuries. Well, we can focus primarily on redesigning the workplace or task itself. Uh, these things are involved in an area called physical ergonomics. There's a few other types of ergonomics as well, cognitive, organizational. We're going to focus mainly on physical, so the physical world. Just to give you an idea of how common an issue this is, every year roughly 1.8 million workers experience work-related musculoskeletal disorders, WRMDs. So we can make the job less physically demanding, and that actually fits with the scientific management method pioneered by Frederick Taylor. Sometimes people criticize him for dehumanizing the worker and kind of making them a robot, but he was a big proponent of ergonomics, which actually makes your life better as an employee. One example for him was he had people who shoveled coal shovel coal that didn't weigh as much, so it didn't put as much strain on them, and it actually increased their efficiency, so it was a win-win. Surgery is a solution as well, but I really want to stress, it should always be a last resort. Don't put up with bad conditions until you need surgery. And really, surgery, it's just fixing a symptom, not the underlying problem. So if you get surgery to fix your carpal tunnel, and you go back to doing the same job that gave you carpal tunnel, you're not going to have a lot of luck. There are thousands of ways to improve the ergonomic conditions of the workplace or the task itself. I'm going to go over a few of those now, just so you have an idea of some things you can do. In ergonomics, it's very important to work in a neutral posture. Keep the S-curve of your spine in its natural form. So some ways to help with this, stand with a foot rest, have good lumbar support, Otherwise, if you're bending forward, you may have like a C shape in your back, and that's really bad. If you are frequently lifting things, tilt the platform you're grabbing them off of, if it's possible. Don't grab things from a horizontal platform all the time, or you have to bend farther for them. Keep the neck aligned, so don't tilt it. If you're doing a task where you're constantly looking up or down, don't do it. Change the job so you can look straight and directly at it. Also, keep your elbows at your side and relaxed, not raised. If you're moving your arms around all over the place and your elbows flying left and right, probably not a good setup. I've done tasks before where I have to move my arms a lot, and even just 45 minutes of having my elbows not relaxed 
begins to make me ache. I've also had situations where I had to look up at the ceiling for eight hours. Although it was only once a week, I was sore going home that day. If that was my full-time job, or even busy part-time job, I would have repetitive strain injuries after a while. Keep your wrist straight as much as possible when working. You see there in that top right picture, that person is wearing a wrist brace, probably because they had a wrist injury and they need to keep their wrist more straight. Now is a good time to mention too, things like back braces and wrist braces don't suddenly protect you and make life magical and ergonomical. If you're in a bad setup, a wrist brace is not gonna save you. It's just kind of a gentle reminder to not move your wrist as much. The picture below it shows how awkward jobs can be. If that person has their hand like that all the time, they're probably gonna get a wrist injury eventually. It's also important to push things, don't pull, especially as they get heavier and heavier. Maybe you have a personal example for this. Ever remember trying to move something heavy? Did it hurt your back trying to pull on it compared to pushing? Keep everything within a close reach envelope. If you're constantly bending and stretching to grab things, it's not a great setup. The diagram I have for that is think about your intimate space, those loved ones you keep close. You want all your tools and things close to you as well, because if it's your job, you're gonna need that stuff pretty frequently. It's also important to reduce excessive motions. So if you have to screw in a bunch of screws one day, please use an electric screwdriver as opposed to just a regular hand one. And for my last tips, I'll say this. Minimize the pressure points through soft, large grips. Hard, straight angles put a lot of pressure on your hands, feet, whatever you're using. Also in the workplace, provide clearance. That sounds kind of obvious, but really a lot of ergonomical things are kind of obvious if you think about it. If you're hitting your head on something or hitting your knee on something, even if it's only once a week, change it if you can, why not? It's also good to schedule in stretching and moving breaks throughout the day. If you're in management or a position where you can actually do this, have people take a break once an hour or once every two hours. Get the blood flowing. Things like that really will help make a difference. So that's it for the tips. I'll end the video on this. Ergonomic products and features are here to stay because manufacturers can charge premiums for slight shape changes, adding grips, and other features like that to tools and equipment. Sometimes they're warranted, sometimes they're not. So make sure that the tool you are buying will be used frequently enough to warrant the extra cost for ergonomics. Manufacturer wants to make a premium. You should only pay that premium if you're gonna run the risk of getting a repetitive strain injury. In general, make sure that your work environments are comfortable, uniform, and positioned appropriately. And above all else, pay attention to pain. That's the signal that something in your environment is not ergonomically correct. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, subscribe. I'm gonna to try to do one a day in the summer of 2016. I hope you can apply a lot of these ergonomic tips to your workplace. Bye.